Hey, welcome everybody. Andy Sachs here with Coldwell Banker and the Around Town team for our maiden voyage of the Around Town Real Estate Podcast. And I couldn't be happier to have my co-sponsor, David Garofalo, with Guaranteed Rate Affinity, making a move over now to, to a great opportunity, we think, and something that is that is going to only help our clients more. David, welcome. I appreciate you Thank coming you. on. Thank you for inviting me. A uh, little bit about David, just get started here. And I got a lot of questions to ask you because the, the landscape of the mortgage world has just been turned on its on its head right. since, you know, for the past 10 years. So I, I got more questions I can imagine, but just to kind of set the scope a little bit on, on David's uh, achievements. Uh, Dave, you did about $70 million in loans last year, you and your team. Uh, how many guys working for you? I have, uh, I have a junior and I have a business development guy yep. and another loan officer who works for me. I mean, you, got, you guys run so lean and mm. so efficient and you're probably only at a 50 or 60% capacity of what you could do. Correct. I mean, how, how exciting has that got to be? Which is intentional, by the way. You know, oh. to be at 50 to 60% capacity, it means that we're not all stressed out to the max. Yeah. Right? We work together as a team, as one group, as one team. So when somebody calls us, you know, we, any of us can answer the question. So if somebody's on vacation, if somebody's away, if somebody's out of town, you know, we have coverage for... But that's everybody. that's really interesting because a lot of these, mo these mortgage teams, a lot of the real estate teams, right. it's really like, oh, it's my guy, it's my guy. But right. you guys don't care where the client's coming from. You're all, you're all on top of this one client. Right. So there's, there's constant continuity, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what, what was the impetus of developing a team in that manner rather than the usual of like, okay, I'm the originator, this is my guy, I'm taking this client to closing. Right. Why did you choose to go with this kind of more holistic approach? You know, the way I look at it is I wanted to be at a place where I wanted to go to work every day, right? And everybody that's on my team, we all want to be there. We, wanna, we all have fun together, we all work together, we all you know, have a great time hanging out together. But the bigger part is that I didn't want to create competition in my office, right? So we're, you know, when I started this business 15 years ago, it was all just going out, getting realtors, working for myself, doing my own thing. Right. And as we constantly started gradually growing and getting more people on our team, it became more of a situation where we just wanted to create the best customer service that we possibly could. And we want to have, have a good time at, at the office. And when you, when you like your job, you're going to perform better, right? And so the way we look at it is I can't teach people to compete against me. But I can make people on my team, you know, happier. So everybody loves our job. Yeah. You know, we all have a role. We have an assistant. We have a processor as well. Um, and, and, ev we all... and everybody knows where every loan is in exactly. at whatever given time. Right. At every time we have a meeting, you know, every morning and we go over our complete pipeline, everybody's loans and whatever, you know, whatever questions arise, whatever we have challenges with. Look, there's stuff that I don't know the answer to that I can go to somebody else on my team who's been there for 15 years as well, right. you know, who can help me answer questions. Now, what was the, you know, nearly 250 loans closed this year. Your previous firm was fantastic. Why this change now? You know, me making the change over GRA, or Guarantee Rate Affinity, is really just geared towards growing. You know, we have, like I said, we have 56% capacity where we're at. Um, and we all love our job. We're not stressed out. But we have room to grow. And I think that, you know, even though the previous lender... Because you were in a great spot. Yeah, they Total Mortgage is a tremendous you. company. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're a tremendous company. They're one of the largest purchase lenders in Connecticut. They're privately held. They're, they're a great, great company. Definitely. And we're very good to you. They're very good to me. Yeah. They're good to their clients. Um, for me, making the move to GRA was really just geared towards, you know, being able to grow a little bit of a bigger, bigger team, but also, you know, being able to capitalize on more realtors that are captured in that kind of GRA model, right? So... You know, we have, we've been doing business in the Trumbull area for 15 years, literally. And, you know, Trumbull, Newtown, kind of Oxford and, and Milford and kind of that, that's those surrounding areas. Right. And, you know, there's a lot of coverage from Cobalt Banker and well, so, so, Guarantee so, Rate Affinity. So real quick, so what the Guarantee Rate Affinity right. is, is there's an agreement with Cobalt Banker, my corporate company, right. and Guaranteed Rate to utilize Guaranteed Rate services within mm -hmm. our company and give them an opportunity to serve our clients. Correct. And so that's where the kind of the growth opportunity comes because right. now you're, you're going to be with the market leader within the real estate market exactly. in our area, bringing your kind of market leading team right. together. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So for us, it gives us an ability to market towards those agents and towards their clients without having more so on the inside instead of marketing to them from the outside. Got right? it. Um, but it also gives us the ability to maintain all of our existing relationships, right? So we're still kind of separate. You know, we, we're maintaining our, our existing realtors that are not affiliated with Cobalt Banker, just the same as we would be, you know, inside Cobalt Banker. Absolutely. You know, so for us, it's, it was important for us, if we're going to make a move like this, that it would be no issues at all of keeping our existing people. Because we do a lot of business with some of the best realtors in the area. Well, I think that was one of the benefits of working with your team is that you guys remained, even though you were with a great company before, you remained... Right fiercely independent. Correct. 
So and which we which we're going to continue to be right. And well, right. and that's the, one of the benefits of working with you. That's why my team works with you. Right. So, but listen, that's that's enough about you. It's enough yep. about why we love you. Right. Right. Let's talk about the mortgage market. Right. Mm-hmm. Where are the challenges you're seeing? I mean, you 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 came in when the market was booming. You saw it crash. Right. What are some of the fundamental differences from you know the beginning of the crash to today for getting loans closed that people have to be aware of? You know, honestly, when I first came into this business, if you had a pulse, you can get a mortgage, right? So I came in at a great time for the fact that it was very easy. Right. You know, we were fortunate that we didn't go down the road of the subprime market, right? We didn't go down that road where, you know, there's any predatory lending or anything like that. We still stayed focused on the realtor. But what we had seen happen was over the years, you know, probably 08, 09, when the market really started to get difficult. You know, this is when, you know, you could have a 600 credit score and that was all you needed. Right. You didn't need stated anything income. Else. Stated income. You know, you could, we could, you could be in any profession, and we could say you were making four hundred thousand dollars a year. Now that's not the, the intent, right? right? But when when a client filled out the application, you know, if they put on there, I made this, then we, we were, didn't have we, to verify. We were allowed to take their word for it. We though. were allowed to take right. their word for it, which sounds crazy now, which right? Which sounds crazy. In now. the middle of it, it was like this makes total sense. Makes so here's your credit score. This is right. this is your job. This makes sense. So you probably make this, and you're going to have that job forever. Right. And the way the lenders look, lenders looked at it was, who knows more about your budget, and what you can afford than you do, right? But we also thought that the market was continuing to rise forever. Right? Yeah. And the good then, times will never end. Exactly. And then what happened was you get some of these um, negative amortization type of loans, right? Or these uh, where essentially you're paying it based on a 1.9% rate when the rate's really 7%, right? And you're, you're deferring all of that interest. Right. right. Well, eventually they're going to come back for that, right? You also have these arms, right? And back then you had, you could have a two year arm, right? Just for a mortgage at 3%. And there could be a five year prepayment penalty. So where you can't get out of this thing for five years, otherwise you're paying a hefty penalty. So it adjusted after two years, possibly to a rate you couldn't afford, but you possibly, couldn't get out of this thing. Correct. Possibly to a rate of 8%, right? From 3%, right? right. So, it got, it got a lot of people in the situation. Now, the, the idea behind that was, well, listen, you had to put some of the onus on the actual homo, homeowner sure. and the buyer. But you know, from a lending standpoint, if the market continued to appreciate, then who cared? Was there always going to be equity in this property, right? There was a time where we were doing 110% equity cash out refinances. So if your house is worth 100, we could do a cash out refinance of 110. Right, because six months later, it was going to be worth 110. Or 130. And for, a while, and, well, and for a while, that's right. what happened. Right. I mean, listen, shame on all of us in the industry. Correct. I came in when it crashed, but shame on all of us in the industry for believing the good times would never end. Right. I mean, where in history did things, what empire lasted forever, right? Exactly. The Romans fell too. And right. And so did we here. Right. We got very, almost got lazy from that early standpoint. Yeah. Well, what happened is once that market started to change in 08, 09, then it was like, now we have to make up for all of our old mistakes. And now we're gonna make it very, very difficult. So, you know, kind of a quick stat, you know, or a underwriting guideline was debt to income ratio, right? So back then you could do, if you did a full documentation loan, you had to be a 65% debt to income ratio, right? So maybe right. essentially 65% of your, you know, debt didn't be covered by what your in- monthly income's gonna be. Well, with like this, it went to 38, right? So you had somebody who was qualified to, to spend 400 now, just like that, is now qualified to spend about you know two seventy five, right? Right. So almost overnight, that had happened, which well, is healthier, quite frankly, healthier, very healthy. But it also gave the banker, you know, a lot of people stopped buying, right? Because they're now no longer in that market. Well, now you you qualify for a lot less. Now what's happening is the market's driving down, right? Because right. prices have that prices pool. have to adjust to accommodate exactly. where buyers can buy. Correct. Right. So what, you know, at the end of the day, you know what happens is now now you have these borrowers that kind of getting discouraged or you have other people that are kind of defaulting on the loans and, and that sort of thing and it really just drove the market. And so, so where are you seeing now? What are the biggest difficulties or kind of things the buyer needs to look out for when going through the mortgage process? So we all talk about you know, your team makes it easy, makes it seamless, but there right. are, there's, there's hurdles to overcome on Absolutely. every loan, right? Absolutely. I mean, you kind of shield us from it and get the buyers through it, right. but what's happening behind the scenes, right? What right. is, and maybe let's, let's go through the average buying process. Mm-hmm. And let's not go through the super difficult with, with tough right. credit, which you guys help repair, or right. the really easy, you know, all cash, you know, mostly cash guy with mm-hmm. 800 score. Right. Who's the, the average buyer? Because that's what we're serving mostly. You know, look, the average buyer could be 3% down. Right, or it could be you know three and a half percent down FHA, right. right? You know, or it could be somebody who has just has you know barely has ten percent of a down payment. You know, we'll look at something like that and say you know put the, if your credit scores are decent enough, put down five percent or put down three percent and save the additional money in your reserves, right? In case something happened, you have that money to fall back on. You know, but the way the process works is it's it's very streamlined now as opposed to where it was six seven years ago. Yeah, you know, six seven years ago you were going through a lot more hoops than you are now. Now, for the most part, you complete an application. We're looking at income or verifying income or verifying assets. 
Um, we're verifying where your down payment might be coming from. Maybe it's coming from a gift. Maybe it's coming from your savings. Maybe it's coming from a 401k. Um, and then, you know, we, what we'll do is we'll take, hand it off to our processor who will basically go through a checklist of documents. The, if you're divorced, we need a divorce decree. Um, you know, last two pay stubs, last two bank statements, last two W-2s. Where do, where do buyers, you know, is there paperwork they don't typically get in? Are there things that buyers think they don't need to share or do share? Where do, the, where, where do buyers get in trouble? Because my Some experience the bigger, oftentimes is it's the buyers that right. say, well, I didn't know I need to tell you that. Right. A lot of times when it comes to divorce decrees, they don't always want to dis disclose all of it to us. And we have to see it because we have to see if you're receiving alimony, if you're getting alimony, right. you know, if you're paying it, child support, all that stuff. All right. Um, but a lot of times if people are getting gift funds, one of the bigger hangups is, you know, if somebody's getting a gift fund uh, and we have to verify where that money's coming from. We right. have to verify the donors, basically bank statement. $20,000 can't all of a sudden appear in your bank account. We need right. to know where it came from. Exactly. You, you need to know that it is a gift and not to be paid back because otherwise it's another a debt Correct. on the property, right. which you guys right. don't want to see. Right. Yeah, so you know that's one of our biggest hangups right now. A lot of people, because if I'm lending my son money, right, and it's eleven twenty grand, I don't want to have to show my bank statements, right, right. But we have to see it. We need to see thirty days worth of statements, so that to accomplish the fact that you didn't just take a twenty thousand dollars worth of cash, give it to the person who's giving you back the money, right. right. We need to see they had that money themselves. Now, how long does it? How long does the money have to be in the bank account? I think the word is called seasoning. Yeah. So if the money's already there, and then they show you the account thirty days later, right, you're not going to question where the money came from. Correct. Okay. Right. I'll tell you right. a funny story. One time we had a buyer who had won like ten or twenty thousand dollars at the casino, mm -hmm. and the money appeared in his bank account. And he said, "Well, I won at the casino. I can't prove it." And we had to go to the Mohegan Sun, and they had to figure out when he was there and that he did indeed. Oh my goodness! They, we had to get a letter from the casino saying yeah. yes, he won twenty thousand dollars here at the right. casino on whatever date, and this is where right. it came from. Right. So. Yeah, and and then that's one of those situations where that buyer may go back and say, "This bank put me through hell." Right, right, right. But we're not trying to. We want just we want the loan closed just as much as the buyer wants the loan to close. Right. You know, we'll do our best to make it a streamlined. And listen, if there's something that seems silly from the underwriter, we're gonna fight like we like crazy to make it go away. But there's some stuff that you just have to document. And, and it's, but it's also for it their protection too. For their protection, right? We, we don't right. want them to get into a loan that because they didn't disclose something, right. They really can't afford. Right. Right. Exactly. Are you seeing buyers being more conservative now? Are you seeing buyers asking more questions? Like, can, can I afford this, right? Because I, th I think there's always a, a disconnect on some level of um, skepticism, both in my industry and your industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just want the home to close. You just want the loan to close. Right. That's how you get paid. Well, that's true. That is how we get paid. Right. But we do care. Right. But are buyers more educated now? Correct. Buyers, buyers probably are more educated, but they're also more realistic. You know, and back maybe a few years ago where they would try to be really qualified to the maximum of right. their qualifications. Right now we're seeing people are kind of where they want, where they should be. You know, if, you're, if you really take a look at your budget, if you really truly look at what your budget is and what you can afford on a monthly basis, most likely that's way less than what the bank's gonna qualify you for. Of course. Right? So you may say, I can, I can qualify to spend two grand a month, um, but the bank may come back and say, well, you're qualified to spend $3,000 a month, right? And Don't what I it. always say is, I always say, look, this is I, my first question when I meet with the borrower is, you know, what are you comfortable spending on a monthly basis? Because yeah. if, you're, if you're comfortable spending $2,000 a month, then we need to stay within that range. Because you've already done your due diligence. It's not my job to talk right. into spending more. Right? So you, you've done your due diligence and you're, you've looked at your own, your, your own budget. You know, you know what you should be affording. Um, so it doesn't really matter what the bank qualifies you for at that point. Right. I mean, the bank may qualify you for $700,000, but you only want to spend four hundred. Yeah. Then you got to stick to your number, not the bank's number. We had the same conversation with our buyers as well. Right. right. So it's, 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 it's go talk to Dave, figure out what you can qualify for, but what kind of lifestyle do you want to live? Exactly. Right. Do you want to be able to furnish your home? Do you want to be able right. to eat? Do you want to max out your 401k still? Right. Do you, right. Yeah. Do you want to contribute, maybe retire one day if that exists still right. in our society? Right. Right. I'm not quite sure. Right. Exactly. But, right. So where, where do you want to be? It's all part of that larger holistic planning, I think. And exactly. I, I, think, I think you're very good at it. I think my team is very good at it. But I think at the end of the day, it's something that our industry doesn't ask the right questions, right. right? I think we're afraid to, I think we're afraid of losing the client. Um, and listen, sometimes you, know, you do lose the client, but most of the time when you ask those questions, you lose them for now because right. they go back and they say, you know what? I am gonna rent for one more year. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna save up a little more money, knock down my monthly payment or afford a little bit more. Right. That, you know, cause I'm expecting this bonus, whatever. And then when they buy, they're that much more comfortable and also grateful for the guidance. Exactly. I think we're afraid to have those conversations in our yeah. industry. Yeah, you're right. You know? Well, some, sometimes you're talking to somebody who's desperate. Right another end, right? So if you're calling somebody just online, right? Well, most likely you're, they're talking to 300 people a day and they're just trying to sell, sell, yeah. sell, sell, sell. So, you know, when you talk to somebody like yourself, somebody like us who, who's in the local market who doesn't get our business online, right? 
you know, we maybe we care a little bit more, but we're also not desperate, right? Because we do have these strong relationships with right. people like yourself. I work with a lot of financial advisors as well, you know, and we work in conjunction with their borrowers, you know, yep. and with their clients. And, you know, sometimes we do refinances to consolidate debt. You know, sometimes we, you know, some they want to buy a home in Florida, right? A second home. Like we go through all those analysis with these people and right. we keep the financial advisor up to speed the whole process. And that's another thing. It's, I think we're. I think we get afraid sometimes in our business. To say, hey, have you talked to your accountant? Right. Have you talked to your financial advisor? Exactly. How does this play into your future planning? Not just your now and what you want now, right. but what you're going to want in 10, 20, 30 years. Right. Right. Exactly. Is this is this, is this a detriment to your future planning? If it is, right. We should probably spend less. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Absolutely. Right. So, Absolutely. Yeah, you, you had mentioned something. You know. When the, when the market was easy, right? Mm -hmm. And you, you got in when it was easy, right? right. I, I had just missed those days and mm -hmm. I'm actually very grateful for it. It created a lot of bad habits for people. I, I, that's why I'm yeah. grateful because I came in, <clears throat> the, the phone wasn't ringing, I didn't know right. any better, so I just started knocking on doors and making phone calls, mm -hmm. right? I figured out, like, I have to work hard. Right. Imagine that in life, right. Right? right? But how did you adjust from just people, people just writing loans, writing loans, anything was approved, yeah. all of a sudden the faucet turns off, right. the market crashes, how did you adjust mindset? You know, believe it or not, for me, it was it almost became easier. And it became easy for the fact that we lost 7% of our competition, mm. right, in that time. Now, <clears throat> when I got into the business, I came into the business with people that were financial advisors in their previous life that were, that were also new to the mortgage business. Right. So we didn't necessarily have a whole bit, book of business of people we were calling. We were learning this stuff together in 2003. You know, I was right out of college, right? right. So we're learning all this together. Um, and we didn't, so yeah, we didn't make as much as some of these other people were making at that time, but we were creating good habits because we were trying to build an actual business. Got it. And what happened was we networked the realtors, we networked with financial advisors, with attorneys. We networked in our local market. You know, the people that really got burned were the people that were just spending 50 grand order, a month on order, order takers. Yeah, yeah, and calling people from, you know, Ohio and from California and from all right. over the country just to sell them some sort of subprime loan. And they really care. Just pretty much chop, chop shops. Chop shops, yeah. all over the place, yeah. right? Like bo just boiler room setups. Yep. You know, so, so for us, when I started, it was really just that. It was, all right, well, where's business coming from? Let's go talk to realtors, right? And network realtors. So, you, you, so, so you purposely at the beginning of your career, knowingly or unknowingly, took the slow road. Exactly, unknowingly. But it was the best thing in the world that could have ever happened, yeah. right? Because now, you know, 15 years later, we're still thriving. And we still have business. I still have agents that I've worked with 15 years ago to this day. Do you have, listen, because you know, we're, we, we wrote it down. And unfortunately, in Connecticut, we're kind of just at the bottom of the pool skidding along. I mean, right. We don't expect massive appreciation. Hopefully, a couple right. of points here and there. But we are going to hit another recession mm -hmm. in the not-too-distant future. Right. Does it scare you? It doesn't scare me, no. Tell it me doesn't why. scare me. The reason why it doesn't is because of the way our business is set up. Right. We have, listen, at the end of the day, we have hundreds of agents that will refer us right. on any given moment, right? As we'll be their top person to refer. Right. You know, so as long as this house is being sold, we're going to be somewhat involved in that process, right? So it doesn't scare me because I've done, I've gone through it, yeah. you know, and back when the market really started to collapse, it was those call center people that died. Right. It wasn't people like you and me. It was, it wasn't the relationship builders. You we'll know, we build that. relationships. Does, does, a, does a market crash, if it does come, when it comes, mm -hmm. it's going to come right. one day. Um, are you excited for it? I'm not excited because it, it, it will be adjustments, but I'm not nervous about it because I know there's going to be a big weed out of people. People are going to be leaving this industry and they'll be left. Do you remember, you remember back in the day, you know, years ago where sure. every single person's brother-in-law was a mortgage broker slash realtor, totally. right? You would get a business card that said, hey, I do telecom, but I also do mortgages on the other right. side of it, totally. right? Or I do florist, I'm a, I sell flowers and I also do real estate, right? You know, so those days are gone. Now look, a lot more regulation now. Yep. To prevent a lot of that stuff, well, on your, on your side of the house, it's more regulation. Side. Ours is still, I mean, That's it's true. still kind of the wild west. That's true. Right? I mean, anyone right. can be a realtor. You can right. have fifteen other jobs and be a realtor. Very right. little oversight. Just keep your continuing education up. Exactly. Which you can take online for the love of God. Yeah. Right. Um, exactly. I think we're probably the next group to be regulated, and maybe not Hopefully. the next crash. And I, for you, it's going to be the best thing to happen. I I can't wait. Right. I mean, I personally think that our licensing fees should be ten times the amount. Right. You know, because then you take it seriously. If you got to pay yeah. thousands of dollars a year just to be in the business. Right. You're gonna take it seriously rather than a couple hundred bucks. And listen, and if you you also you know when you're at work and you want to go see a house, you don't want to wait till the other person's done with his full time job to go talk to them about that house. Right. Right. I mean, you don't want to wait till six o'clock at night when you know there's other full time people like you who are gonna eat their that person's lunch. You that's, know, that's, that is the plan. Right. I like lunch. So so the same thing with real estate. You know, every I mean with mortgages, right. every single person you knew did mortgages, and then once that crash happened, and now people had to take tests. 
before you even had to take a test. At least you had to take a test. You know, you could just sign up right at college and say, hey, I'm delivering pizzas, but I'm also gonna do mortgages. I didn't know that. Yeah, and then once the testing started, it became, you saw a huge amount of people leave this industry. And do you guys have continuing educational requirements? You do, you do yeah. not, okay. What, where do you see your part of the industry going? Um, I, think, uh, I think it's gonna come back to really relationship building, right? So a lot of it now is done online. We do a lot of stuff online marketing yeah, type we, of thing, but we, we, we focus on the, you know, we essentially focus locally, right? Um, but I think it's gonna always come back to the relationship. The so person you, you trust, the person you can see face to face. Well, how do you how do you how do you justify that? And listen, I, I agree that's where I want it to be. Right. But how do you say that when you've got Quicken Loans, mm -hmm. who you know you know they don't do a bad job for they what they are. You know they they're, they're they're all over client services. Right. Even from a listing agent, I get calls from the mortgage originator saying, mm -hmm. "Here's where we are in the process for the buyer that's not even my client." Right. Well, that's pretty impressive, right? Yeah. It's the stuff you guys do for us. Right. But a company, you know, the guy sitting in a call center a thousand miles away is doing it. Right. So how do you how do you say that? Like, how do you you know what I mean? How do, you, how do you accomplish that where people are going to want to come back to the face-to-face -face when you've got these behemoths out there? Right. You know? They're good competition yeah. because, you know, honestly, they spend a billion dollars a year in marketing. Yeah, they, right? Tremendous. They spend a ton of money, and, and they are an actual machine. Right? Now, the difference is you know, from Quicken, a lot of these places, there's 27 people touching your file. Yes. Right? Literally. Yeah. So you don't necessarily, from the consumer standpoint, you don't necessarily know who you're even talking to when you call in. There, right. Right? But there's a lot of ideas that they're creating that other people are taking, right? So there's a lot of stuff that they do that I might put into my own practice. Any, any examples come to mind that? Not, well, just kind of the way they provide the paperwork, right? They, you know, when you close, when you close on a loan with them, it used to just be a stack like this from your attorney. Right. But when you close on a loan with them, you get, you get this beautiful binder thing with all these different tabs and you get something that's been missing from this industry for a long time. Right, so there's stuff like that, similar stuff that that we can use, utilize to, right. to enhance the customer service on a local level. Let them call across the country. Right, you know we want to be the best person in my market. Absolutely, I want to be the best in my exact market. I don't need, I don't care what you do in New Jersey. No, nope. stay, stay, stay in our wheelhouse. Exactly, stay yeah, focused. Plenty of business. Exactly. There's, I think you and I both agree. And I said earlier about you, we've got, you know, we're only about fifty percent capacity ourselves. Right. Yeah, you know, right, both right. of us need to double where we're at. Right. We could double it. We could, but we can. It's yeah. possible. Yeah. It's out there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. And I think, I think you know, listen. It all comes down to service, mm -hmm. right? There's there's very little in our business. I think we can control. Right. Uh, from my end, it's service and marketing. Right. I know where the marketing is going to happen. Right. And I can be super responsive and attentive to our clients. Right. Beyond that, you know, we we hope we hit the market right on the pricing or mm -hmm. the guidance to the buyer. Right. You know, from your end, it's the service. It's being attentive. People just yeah. want to know someone's going to pick up the phone or call them back real fast. Right. right? Right. Whether it's silly questions or serious questions, they just right. they want to know you're working for them. That's it. And you know, when it comes back to you know what's helped us be successful as opposed to other mortgage people, is I tell my team every day, all we have to do is just show up and do our job. It's a full time job. Yep. Right. We show up at nine o'clock in the morning, we leave at five, five, six o'clock at night, right? But we have to show up. You let your guys go home? Yeah, yeah. But we you know we gotta take calls at night. Oh, okay. But listen, we uh but we have to show up every day. It's a full time job. We right. have to spend uh, spend our full time doing this job. And if it's December, middle of December, and there's nothing going on, we still gotta be in that office. Yeah. Because if the phone rings, we still gotta be able to answer it and, and answer it intelligently. Listen, I can answer the call from my home. But I don't have your file in front of me, right? Right. So you need to be during work hours. You need to be there and focus on your job. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And just taking it seriously. Taking it seriously is the biggest step in being successful. It's show up. Show up and show be honest. Up. Yeah. Be honest and don't try to sell anybody because can't, can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do. You can't do it. Yeah. Totally exactly. okay with that. Exactly. Dave, man, I, I appreciate taking the time driving up here to be with me. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're you're the co-sponsor of this podcast mm -hmm. and uh, and, and video that we're going to be doing twice a month. And I appreciate you. I appreciate you all do for our team. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we'll have you back. Definitely. Appreciate Thanks, it, man. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.